Hey folks, welcome to another edition of Fitness Friday Positives with Rochelle. Last time I highlighted some marketing best practices from the Shreveport, Bossier City, Louisiana locations of Planet Fitness and actually relentless research of Rochelle. I did some background research. For all this time I've not had a clue who owns those gyms, so I'm happy to report did some background research and found out because I'm always big on giving acknowledgement and credit where credit is due. And that is Kansas, so KS slash LA, Kansas slash Louisiana Sutherland Group as they are continuing to do a bang up job of marketing. And so marketing is always something I like to come back to each and every year, typically a couple times a year on Fitness Fridays. So folks, stay tuned for more marketing, best practices, tips, insight for in 2019. Looking forward to that. But folks, this time I actually wanted to shift gears and discuss the fitness industry on a broader level. Talk about some fitness trends, some things that are going on. Everything ranging from the government fitness guidelines and how that's all working and panning out, all the way to the commercialization of fitness and the business of fitness, and where you see things like what I refer to instead of calling them annual fees. Some facilities call them annual fees, some call them membership fees, some call them annual membership fees, but actually it's a question of semantics. And so Annual fees, the term annual fees, tends to be very po unpopular, particularly in the fitness industry. And so that's why some locations, and actually, you know, I, I think that's a great idea from a marketing perspective to utilize the term membership fees. And you think about marketing, for those of you, for those of you who are familiar with Amazon Prime, think about when they're marketing that service, how, what do they call it? All right, membership fees. We have annual, annual membership fees, uh, but you always see membership fees, membership fee, membership fee. Um, and actually, their biggest competitor now, Walmart, is actually stating, we have free two-day shipping, no membership fee, or no membership required. And so you can see there just a question of semantics. If you can, can neutralize that terms, if you have any flexibility in terms of your marketing and your messaging, utilizing <laughs> membership fees as opposed to, or annual membership fee as opposed to just flat out membership or annual dues or annual fees. Um, just, just we'll, we'll talk more about that in 2019, but just very, very fascinating in terms of the business of fitness, marketing and all of that and how it all pans out, folks. But I wanted to kick off this episode by highlighting something that is very, very important, not only in the fitness industry, not only in this country, but around the world, as we've seen and heard in various news reports and all of that. The heroin, the opioid epidemic um, in this country and around the world is, is really staggering at this point. We're seeing a lot of overdoses, um, you know, particularly here in the U.S. We've got a serious heroin ep epidemic or opioid epidemic going on, prescription medications that are derivative from opioids, just all of that. So we're seeing a lot of overdoses. Um, and this is actually something I wanted to highlight as it pertains to the fitness industry in particular, because now gyms are starting to, you're starting to see instances of folks overdosing in fitness facilities. And I actually received this kit here. You wonder, what is this red thing Michelle has here? Now, the Novi Community Coalition gave these out a couple of couple of months ago at an event, and so I had no clue what it was, and they're handing them out, and I'm talking to the representative from the Novi Community Coalition. And so what this is, is this is a, what is this, the, the Naxalone is actually, I want to make sure I got the, the name of the, the drug right. Naxalone HSL injection, HCL injection, um, auto injector. So for those of you who have heard, you know, police department, police departments, fire departments, those folks who perform the rescue efforts for folks who have overdosed, had the, the particularly with, with the opioid overdoses, um, this is the, the medication that they use in order to revive patients. And so they were giving these out and, you know, it's got gloves and it's got the, you know, instructions and stuff inside, questions in terms of saving a life. Number one, are they breathing? Number two, call 911 for help. Number three, airway. Number four, rescue breathing. Number five, evaluate. Number six, prepare Naxalone. Number seven, muscular injection. Number eight, evaluate and support. And there's, you know, other resources inside of this. But I wanted to quickly highlight this, folks, in the interest of time. We actually had, and then this is how it became, a, you know, I really put two and two together and just in, did some more research and recognizing that the fitness industry and facilities are, are, are starting to experience folks, unfortunately, overdosing inside their facilities. And we had one right here in Metro Detroit, actually we're very, very close to my home here um, in Commerce Township, Michigan. If you actually know I'm a member of Planet Fitness in Commerce Township, Michigan, this was the lifetime fitness in Commerce Township. So uh, the, the spinal column which is a smaller, a smaller weekly newspaper here, and it stated at 345, there's an update here, 
Um, at 3.45 p.m. on September 7th, sheriff's deputies in the Commerce Township Fire Department responded to Lifetime Fitness and a 2900 block of Commerce Crossing on reports of a subject who was down outside of the building near the pool area. The caller indicated that the subject was unresponsive and not breathing. Lifeguards were administering life-saving measures to the victim, a 24-year-old Farmington Hills man. Deputies arrived on scene and identified that the victim may be overdosing on drugs, so they administered a dose of Narcan, Naxalone, which is what I just showed you. The man regained consciousness. He was stabilized and transported to a local hospital for further treatment. So I know it is a, a requirement, especially for trainers, fitness instructors, fitness leaders in particular, to, to have CPR certifications and be, to, to be skilled and well-versed in that area in terms of, you know, somebody has an event or they fall off a cardio machine or whatever the case may be. But what parameters, you know, Lifetime Fitness obviously is a corporate chain, so they've got folks in the corporate in Minnesota that are making sure that their facilities also have policies and procedures when they have folks that, that are dealing with suspected heroin or opioid overdoses. I mean, it's something that's unfortunate, but this is part of the trend that it's just the opioid epidemic is certainly gonna affect all aspects and facets of society, including the fitness arena. And so I just challenge you to ask yourself, particularly those of you who are leaders, what if someone were to overdose in my facility? What policies and procedures do I have in place? Do we, do we know how to recognize potentially when someone is overdosed? Do we have one of those rescue kits? But I'm, I'm realizing after doing more research that many communities are actually starting to provide folks with these particular kits in the event that they run into a situation or anything like that, that the, so that they are prepared and know exactly how to handle it. So folks, I just wanted to share that with you really, really quickly. It's an unfortunate update, but it is something that is certainly happening in our communities across this country and actually across the world. So just always wanna encourage you to be prepared. And next, gonna be doing some reading here on this particular episode of I've got some, some fitness trends here on my phone. Wanted to shift gears here, secondly, by highlighting the federal government releases new fitness guidelines. So Jane O'Donnell, so this appeared in Athletic Business in November 2018. And so this, this was huge, these guidelines came out. And so I just wanna read two or three paragraphs just to give you an overview in terms of how things are working from, from just a, a particular member standpoint. For those of you, you know, leading facilities, those of you who are in training leadership roles, you know, how, how is this working? How are fitness guidelines? Are people doing what they're supposed to do? Or are they not doing what they're supposed to do? So this article addresses that. And it says, less than a third of Americans and only one in five teenagers meet new physical fitness guidelines issued by the federal government Monday, the Department of Health and Human Resources said. The guidelines, which officials said could be easily achieved by most, recommended the same level of exercise as the original standards released in 2008, but without the expectation that the physical activity occur in 10 minute blocks. They call on adults to get at least 150 minutes of moderate, in moderate intensity aerobic physical activity and two sessions of muscle strengthening activity each week. Children aged six through 17 should get at least 60 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic physical activity a day and three sessions of muscle strengthening a week. Moderate intensity, exercise, moderate intensity activity includes walking briskly, riding, on, riding a bike on level ground, and playing doubles tennis according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Muscle strengthening activity includes lifting weights, heavy gardening such as shoveling and yoga. So folks, there it is. Uh, they've, got, they've got guidelines, but unfortunately very few people are achieving those guidelines. So that's kind of where we stand, but also it, it, it truly highlights though the, the opportunity in terms of reaching folks and giving folks opportunities and, and options in terms of becoming physically active and, and getting the appropriate aerobic exercise and muscle, strength, muscle strengthening exercises that are required uh, per the guidelines. So fitness industry is certainly ripe with opportunity. When you see these kind of unfortunate statistics and updates and things like this, articles, it certainly is it's not the best information or the best updates, but it certainly highlights the potential and the great opportunity that exists. So when we think about the opportunity that exists, one, one certain thing we think about moving on now to the next item being the commercialization of fitness. We see this is huge. I mean, the, the business, and, and yes, I'm interested in the actual physical activity of fitness, but I'm also very passionate about the business of fitness and the fitness industry. And so they are certainly very much overlapping and there is a tremendous amount of opportunity in terms of 
commercializing the fitness industry and, and, and the business and the marketing aspects and the revenue generating aspects of the industry. But we always have to remember at the end of the day, it's all about sincerely helping people live healthier lives. At the end of the day, that is truly what it's all about. But folks, you've seen it all. I've seen it all. Just books, DVDs, workshops, seminars, retreats. I mean, there's so many different things. The marketing, the advertising, all of that that goes into trying to help folks to live a healthier lifestyle. And I've got a few examples. You know, I'm always very big on show and tell. And so I've got a few examples here and a couple that actually, and, and folks, you know I love Dollar Tree. I've shared that on a, on a previous episode. Dollar Tree, I love Dollar Tree. And I've, I've gotten a boatload of books. They have some wonderful, particularly inspirational books that I'm big on. But I actually get, remember I told you, I, I, I read and I study on, on, on particularly challenges that folks have in terms of being fit, being healthy, having healthy diets, all of that, you know, because I've got a huge buying spot. So I have to work on it constantly so that I can speak to you all in other situations with integrity and know what are the pain points. What are folks struggling with when it comes to their weight loss? And Dollar Tree has some fantastic books, particularly about weight loss, and I read them and I study them, and that way I'm able to communicate with more empathy in terms of what other folks are going through. And so these were actually a couple that I recently picked up here in the last couple of months. We see Bob Harper, Skinny Habits, The Six Secrets of Thin People. Okay, so that was one. Number two, Harley Pasternak, who says, lose the first, lose the last, lose it fast, five pounds, the breakthrough five-day plan to jumpstart rapid weight loss and never gain it back. All right, so just a couple of examples, and, and, I, and I always just marvel when I see those type of books or whatever case may be, programs, retreats, all of that. And you think about how much money folks are spending to achieve their health and fitness goals and how many folks, quite frankly, fail. Um, fail because remember we got according to the Centers for Disease Control 2017 2018 more than two-thirds of adults in this country are either overweight or obese so there's billions and billions of dollars getting spent in order to rectify that and help folks you know people are investing this money in terms of trying to get a healthier lifestyle and achieve fitness and it's quite frankly not working <laughs> for the overwhelming majority of people when you see those type of books that have all these promises and there's, you know, very marketing driven, um, won't get into all of that. But I often like to tell people is that you will only succeed. This is a Rochelleism. You will only succeed in fitness when fitness becomes a lifestyle and not event and not an event. And so that means picking up a book that's promising you, you know, you're never going to gain the weight back and it's going to be so easy. You know, I often like to tell people fitness is a lifestyle to be successful. Fitness needs to be day in and day out decision after decision, making the right decision, when you need to each and every day, whether that's going to a gym or working out at home or working with a trainer, whatever your needs are to help you to be successful, that's something that can't be just an event. I need to lose 10 pounds for my high school reunion. I need to lose 50 pounds for the, my knee surgery. I need to do this for that. Because typically once the event is over, that's when people revert right back to the same lifestyle that they had before that got them in trouble. And we see that, you know, quite frankly, we're starting to see that more and more with folks who undergo bariatric surgery. And we see that number, the number of folks over, over undergoing those type of surgeries is through the roof, particularly in this country. But again, the, the same behaviors that got folks in trouble in the first place, once they have those bariatric surgeries, they revert right back to those same behaviors and you see a number of people gaining that weight right back and sometimes even more. So I often tell people, fitness, a, a fit lifestyle requires commitment and dedication and it's not going to be easy, but it will certainly be worth it. Have another example here. The Ann Arbor Plastic Surgery Center says, eliminate stubborn fat without surgery and little to no downtime. So again, you know, when you see these type of things, with all due respect to this facility, with all due respect to those authors and everyone who's part of this, this fitness ecosystem, fitness resource ecosystem, if all of these things were true, if, if all of these, again, if you were able, folks were able to eliminate the stubborn fat without little surgery, no little to no downtime, these folks would be trillionaires. You know, these authors would be trillionaires. Who, whoever could find the secret to making weight loss and, and achieving fitness easy with a little commitment, basically no effort, would be trillionaires 10, 20 times over because that's just something that, that no one has found the secret. I guess is what I'm saying. And folks spend a lot of money and a lot of time, unfortunately, spinning their wheels trying to find the secret. Lastly here, when I talk about the commercialization of fitness, 
this article actually appeared in Forbes magazine. I've actually held on to this since April. So this was the April 30th edition, and I knew I was going to speak on this sometime, but this was a very article, a great article here called The Fat Profit. All right, and so I don't have time to, to read through all of it, but it is fantastic. And certainly you can Google it and try to find this article. But very quickly, Lauren Gensler wrote this fantastic article on this guy. And essentially, I'm just going to give you a couple of quick blurbs. Infomercial king Carl Dakler nearly made himself a billionaire by transforming his beach body exercise, DVD business, into a pyramid seller of health shakes. Then his network and the government began to revolt. And I'm going to quickly highlight one a couple of paragraphs here. All right. The way Dakler sees it, he's hit on a scalable solution to the fat epidemic effect, afflicting approximately 175 million overweight and obese adults in the United States. Forget the gym. You'll never go. Instead, shed those pounds in the comfort of your own living room and then become a cheerleader for others, all while making a percentage of sales to regular customers, plus a slice of any new coach's sales that you bring on. In other words, join Beachbody to lose weight and get rich in the process. Dakler himself is now worth an estimated $660 million based on his majority ownership of the privately held company, which has attracted 28 million dieters since its 1998 inception and had revenue of $1 billion in 2017. And this is a quote from him. The fact that there still hasn't been a solution to obesity is a stunning opportunity, says Dakler, dismissing competitors like Weight Watchers and Nutrisystem. It's an opportunity that is just shockingly available to me. And so essentially, I, I, mean, I highly recommend that article, but he's basically saying, you know, the academic, the, the, the obesity epidemic is a huge opportunity in terms of, unfortunately, income potential. Uh, but anyway, as that article alluded to, it, it was some shady things going on. And so I, in terms of how that whole operation was, was going on, so I highly recommend that you, you take a look at it. And so, folks, another, fourthly, another very important shift that we see here in the industry, and I've highlighted this on prior episodes, and we'll go into a whole lot of detail regarding the background of this, but we see a shift away from, when you think about the 60s, you know, and, and Joe Gold, Gold's Gym, considered to be the father of the, the modern-day fitness chain. So in 1965, he founded Gold's Gym. We started to see the, the, the advent the, the, of the big box chains, your big box chains. And so what we're seeing is a shift away from that. 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, but what we're seeing these days now is shift away, a, a general shift in terms of volume and number of facilities um, away from those big box facilities or big box chains towards smaller boutiques. Smaller boutiques, um, they're, you know, their average price per member is higher, their overhead's lower, those are typically square footage, much, much smaller. Um, so we're, we're starting to see a very rapid amount of growth in, within the boutique in the last five to seven years in the boutique aspect of fitness. So when you think about boutique fitness, you think about places such as Orange Theory Fitness, which I've highlighted before, Title Boxing Club, Soul Cycle, those type of facilities represent the boutique, the boutique side of fitness. And so I think it's very important to note going back to some of those old big box chains that are still around, you know, such as such as uh, World Gym. I've actually got an article here wanted to highlight how they too now and World's Gym was part of the whole, along with Powerhouse, Gold's 24-Hour Fitness, part of that body bat, the bodybuilding sector um, early on. This article actually appeared in Club Industry Magazine, and it states here, World's Gym to open first small group training studio in December. The new studio concept is based around the brand's signature small group training program, World Gym Athletics, and will feature other classes such as kickboxing, cycling, and yoga. The 8,500 square foot studio is opening in December 2018 on a to-be-determined date inside Chilliwack's Better Point Shopping Center. So this article was by Anthony Dominic um, from Athletic Business and appeared on November 21st. And so just a little bit more quick information here. It is World Gym International, LA, is opening its first standalone World Gym Athletic small group training studio in December. All right, and so Chilliwack is actually in British Columbia. The new studio concept is based around the brand signature small group training program, which I just said. And so, folks, what we see, and, and this is actually a quote um, from Charlton, one of the folks at the World Gym at Corporate, the folks who were making these decisions, once we saw the sense of community, science behind the program, and education of the coaches, and intensity of the workouts, we knew we had to bring this concept home to Chilliwack, Charlton said in a media release. There's nothing like it in Canada. All right, the new studio will offer each of World Gym Athletics' signature training programs, 
foundations, performance, hit camp, pace, and one barbell. All right, so what we see here is an old school big box fitness chain, which is now emerging and transforming and, and, and becoming innovative and creative in order to remain relevant and, and not fade away with the times because you see all these, the, the, the influx of all these boutique studios, they are integrating that within their brand. And so I think this, this of course, this first one is in Canada. And so it's shown that they're hoping to roll this out to at least 30 clubs globally by the end of 2019. So adopting with the times, recognizing that the times have shifted and now they too need to get with the program, uh, so to speak. Another example here that I have also is from Anthony Dominic. This appeared November 12th in Club Industry Magazine. It says, anytime fitness parent company purchases base camp fitness. And it goes on here to quickly say, self-esteem brands, co-founders, Chunk Runyon and Dave Mortensen plan to launch a domestic and international franchising program for base camp fitness in 2020. All right, so yet again, yet again, We've got a quote here from, from Runyon, Chuck Runyon. Our plan is to build additional corporate-owned gyms next year to explore consumer preferences and perfect the Basecamp fitness experience. Basecamp was developed, and that was by, of course, Chuck Runyon said in a media release. I didn't want to leave that out. Basecamp was developed and founded by Nick Swinmurn, the founder of footwear retailer Zappos, and has five locations across L.A. and San Francisco. Basecamp's signature workouts alternate between 60 seconds of strength training and 60 seconds of stationary cycling, concluding with 10 minutes of core exercise. We believe that the Basecamp Fitness and Anytime Fitness will appear to two very different types of consumers, Mortensen said in a release. Anytime Fitness gyms feature convenient 24-hour access, a welcoming supportive environment, and a growing variety of coaching programs to personally help members achieve their individual fitness goals. Base Camp Fitness features high intensity workouts designed for those seeking fast paced interval training that test how far you are willing to push yourself. Efficient and effective group sessions for people of all fitness levels intended to produce strong bodies, hearts, and minds. So what we see here, Anytime Fitness, I've talked about them many, many times. I, I study them very closely, studied that franchise in 2015 and 2016, if you will recall, 2015 and 2016, they were actually the number weight, number one ranked uh, fitness, actually overall chain recommended by Entrepreneur Magazine. So they were essentially saying this franchise is, it was on fire, had a lot, has have had a lot of global growth, and so essentially number one, number one, number one um, recommendation by Entrepreneur Magazine for 2015 and 2016, Anytime Fitness. Um, I mean, that truly put them on the map, and they have just been explosive um, with more than 4,000 facilities right now. Um, so, but, but this is an example. Even those folks, remember Anytime Fitness, I've talked about this on a prior episode, founded by three former fitness industry consultants, came together and, 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 and founded Anytime Fitness, and there's no wonder why that, why that particular chain has been extremely successful because they, they, they were consultants in terms of helping fitness facilities around the country generate memberships and increase their memberships and sales revenues and all of that. And they came together, founded Anytime Fitness, and that particular chain has done extremely well. But even they themselves are recognizing, okay, there's another opportunity here in the boutique sector, um, high in intensity interval training, and so they too are capitalizing on that. So very, very exciting time um, in the fitness industry. Another quick point here, as we have the YMCA. We know the YMCAs have been around a long time. And so they too, you think about the influx of all of these other chains and all these other boutiques and then the YMCAs are still around in just different parts of the country, different pockets of the country. Some of them are doing extremely well. We actually see some of them closing, some of them consolidating. Um, and so it's just not, it's just not easy. It's just not easy in terms of, again, those, those organizations, uh, particularly those that aren't as profit driven, again, those that are more community oriented, more not profit are certainly um, at, 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 a, at, a, at a challenging point now in their own existence. And so what we've seen, I'm not sure if you've seen them, but they've got a national TV campaign running and they actually have got this ad that appeared. Or actually, they've got some magazine advertising going on, some national media. This one appeared here in, in the December edition of Oprah Magazine or O Magazine. And so it says, us is empowering the why for a better us, ymca.net. So you see the YMCA on a national scale investing a lot of money now to, to just generate, to, to let folks know, hey, we're here, we're still around, we're relevant, 
we've got not only your fitness facilities and all of that, your pools and all of that, but one thing that's certainly a competitive advantage for them that they still have, that they're certainly reminding people of now, is their, their sports programs, their youth programs, things like that. Very, very community oriented, but so they too, you see the trend of, of, of the older chains, the older, older organizations doing whatever they can to stay relevant, to stay relevant. It's, it's, the industry is always changing, always shifting. So I always like to spend time just to share a few trends with you. And lastly, can't forget, for those of you, yes, we talked about the growth of the boutique, and yes, we do have, we have continued growth among the, the, the actual chain sector, some of the big box chains that are still growing quite rapidly. Lastly, being Planet Fitness. And I know for those of you, you know, I'm a proud, happy member of Planet Fitness, but I know for those who are not particularly in a leadership role, <laughs> if, if, if you're in a leadership role of some of an entity other than Planet Fitness, Planet Fitness probably likely keeps you up at night. As you're worried, as you're concerned, and how much are they growing, what's gonna happen, you know, are they gonna doom my business and my facility like they have so many others? And so I wanted to share a quick update here on Planet Fitness. Now this appeared again by Anthony Dominic, November 8th, 2018, in Club Industry Magazine. And so here we go, just a quick snippet to let you know where they stand and what the, what the future, what the vision for the future holds. It says, Planet Fitness opens 41 new clubs, reports 40% growth in 2018 Q3 or the third quarter revenue. The 41 new club openings during the quarter brings Planet Fitness total facility count to 1,646. CEO Chris Rondo said the brand can potentially increase its footprint to 4,000 clubs in the coming years. And so for those of you who are worried and scared, I wanted to give you that update to let you know what you're in for. <laughs> but a lot of growth, and actually I know three, four, five years ago, Wall Street was, was very concerned, and particularly when, when Planet first became a publicly traded company, and there was a lot of concern of, you know, what is, what is Chuck Rondo, what's, what's going to happen with this $10 membership? Is this going to work? Is this, how successful can this be? Are they going to raise that? Is it, what's going to happen with this? And it's just very so impressive uh, to see these franchisees and, of course, the corporate location, but the franchisees really proving the naysayers wrong. Um, and they are doing extremely well, have a lot of growth uh, within that particular franchise. And so you can continue to be worried because they're going to continue to grow and grow and grow for those of you in leadership roles and other facilities but just had to share that uh, but also finally on a planet fitness note here as i'm done with my pf adventures highlighting them in these episodes but did want to share as i was spending some time reflecting on december 12th which was my one year anniversary since i transferred my membership from the novi club good club learned some met some good people there learned some good lessons uh, but then transferred on over to the, the Commerce Club in Michigan here in our Metro Detroit area, which I, which I call the PF Michigan Commerce Country Club. And I think back to, you know, December 12th when I walked in and that's when my transfer became official. It did take a couple days and now, you know, I behind the front desk, Victor and Jason were talking and, and Victor saw me as I walked in the door and he made me stop talking and said, Rochelle, I just want to let you know that your transfer has been processed so you're all set. You don't have to sign in anymore. And I just think about those early, just the early experiences, how those early experiences inside of the fitness industry, whether you're talking about a club or whatever, uh, whatever interaction business, corporate, nonprofit interaction, just really cement some positive feelings and positive vibes for you. And I always remember Victor and just how professionally he handled that whole transfer process. And as I alluded to a few months ago, and just, just how I will always respect him, I'll always remember that. But I think he was the best case, that was the best practice in terms of how that's held. Because when you see these chains, when you see particularly those that are owned by franchise franchisees, where one may, you know, a member may leave one and go to another and transfer from this one to that one. I mean, that is a delicate situation because, you know, one person is obviously losing one club, is losing someone to another club within the same franchise. So that is a very delicate situation. And I just will always remember, respect and appreciate just the professionalism, the attack, the tact, the humility with which he handled that very respectful of where I came from um, and that's certainly something that will always I will always remember that and I will always be highlighting him um, as a best practice of how those type of situations are handled but always remember Victor and Moody that's when I we used to work out a little bit later in the mornings but remember Moody you all have heard me talk about Moody um, just just some just some great folks um, you know Cody the general manager does a fantastic job and I'll always remember that first time I saw him when I was on the triceps the triceps push down machine, the selectorized weight machine, and I saw him walked in. He had his lunch in his one hand, and he, you know, walked in the door and just glazed his, his immediate gaze went right over to the front desk, and he just had this biggest smile on his face. Um, so just wonderful, wonderful folks, and 
the, the Tony. I haven't seen Tony in a while, but I'm gonna, you know, um, I think he was actually on the day shift, but was filling in overnights. And I'll never forget that first Saturday morning when I walked in, um, flourish in the morning, and that, and that facility was just immaculate. And I never seen a high volume facility on a Saturday morning looking like that. I mean, it was in pristine condition. You know, and I'll always remember that and just how just wow walked in. I was like, wow, this is incredible on a Saturday morning that this facility looks like this. You know, I was just so impressed. And the overnight crew, and he was filling in for overnights, and the overnight crew we have now is fantastic. Just a wonderful team. Uh, but I but I will always remember that experience of walking in there on that Saturday morning was something that is forever burned into my brain. Um, and then, of course, and I, I look back to those early days of when I took my very first shower at, at that particular location and just how, so how happy I was because it has true hot water and actually all of the PF Michigan Group gyms. I, mean, I can go to all the different gyms and that is certainly a, a secret weapon of theirs, particularly for those of us who were not raised up north. And, and I'll just share this with you as I close this out. Hot water, folks. I've been living up north a long time, but I have some certain coping mechanisms in the wintertime. So for me, from October to about April, late April, hot water is extremely important to me. Because, you know, when you walk outside and it's three degrees, uh, when I've had a good hot shower, um, it is so, so, so important to me. And so for me to walk into that facility that first time and take that good hot shower, chew hot shower, um, and I'll tell you, when I actually, January, so January 2018, so came back home from Louisiana after Christmas, and, and took a shower, so that would have been my very first day coming back here, probably like January 5th or January 6th of this year, and took a shower, and I was just, it literally it triggered something and said, you know what, something is not right with my hot water at home. And so, and I understand looking back now, but when I bought this condo in 09, you know, they have certain safety parameters for folks that may have children, whatever, and so I literally knew something was wrong, and so that particular shower experience at PF, PF Commerce Michigan inspired me. I started watching YouTube videos to try to figure out what the problem was. Long story short, I made an adjustment on my hot water heater. And so now my hot water heater is now as good and hot. The water is good and hot like it should be. So I have hot showers at the gym and I have hot showers and baths when I come home. So it is just fantastic. So you never know where your inspiration for making great life improvements and positive life improvements is going to come from. But folks, it has been a blast. My entire, you know, there's just so many great lessons and I've shared them with you all the time of my, my Planet Fitness membership. And so I look forward to continuing to share these lessons that I learned. But I'm, you know, I'm always remembering the very important days and the, you know, December 21st, 2017, when it was my very first workout at one of the Shreveport, Louisiana clubs. So always, always, always remembering the good times and the good experiences. And so folks, I'm gonna close out this episode by saying I look forward to sharing next time. The Sales Advantage Part Two. So I look forward to sharing some best practices from sales. So stay tuned for that. But until then, remember, I am positively passionate about your fitness.